Now to another well-known place, South Australia's Flinders Ranges. Its exquisite landscapes are renowned. Less well-known is the fact that it's home to some of the oldest forms of animal life. Geologists are now documenting the area's ancient fossils in a bid to land the region on the World Heritage List. Reporter Nicola Gage went along for the ride. This is one of the best places in the world for looking at early animal evolution. You can travel back through time from the Cambrian through the Ediacaran to the Cryogenian, the Great Ice Age, all laid out like a, a tilted books on a shelf. This dusty cattle station in the heart of the Flinders Ranges holds secrets about what life was like half a billion years ago. Okay, so here you go. You've got the beds laid out. These two geologists are travelling back to that time to find some of those answers about how and why animals first began to move. A lot of people are quite mystified by Ediacaran fossils. They expect to see bones and shells, like you would if you're going to see a dinosaur dig. It can't be more different. What we see are layers of sandstone with ripples on them. More than 500 million years ago, most of this dry, rocky land was a sandy ocean floor. Etched into the layers of rippled sandstone are Ediacaran fossils, which could be the ancestors of worms and crustaceans. This one, on the other hand, Sprigina, appears to have a head and a divided body. And it may even possibly be the very distant ancestor of arthropods crabs, prawns and insects. Those imprints give you the shape of the animal, sometimes even its movement traces, where it had been and what it was eating, apparently, but we don't actually see the detail that you need to be absolutely certain of their relationships to the creatures that you might see in the ocean today. They're the first large creatures preserved in the fossil record on Earth, and they were first discovered in the Flinders by the late geologist Reg Sprigg about 70 years ago. New fossils continue to be unearthed. Look, I, I apologise for my behaviour. I'm like my six-year-old grandson. I get excited when I see something new and make a discovery because it's like opening a new present. You've just revealed something new about the past. When I came here, it was just mind-blowing. I couldn't even believe my eyes, how these things are just sitting there and you can basically touch things that were buried 550 million years ago. Scientists have unearthed dramatic evidence. Of... Scientists are breaking new ground and their work hasn't gone unnoticed. So this shows that the animal not only fed like that, but actually moved like that. Sir David Attenborough travelled to the Flinders Ranges as part of his BBC documentary Origin of Life and has championed its historical and global significance. One of our missions over the next few years as part of our program to look at the Flinders Ranges for its intrinsic value as a potential world heritage site for parts of the Flinders Ranges. The ambitious plan is to land the Flinders on the World Heritage List. South Australia's government has been leading the charge. Local Indigenous groups and pastoralists are on board. Significant fossil sites are being painstakingly documented for the submission. It is a lot of work, but it's, so, it's going to be so much worth it. Uh, any, anything we can do to move this forward, and, and uh, it'll definitely be, uh, even if it doesn't happen, I think the well, information will be there to develop this as, as a geological, uh, a geotourism attraction. Hey, good night, Jim. Yeah, you go. How you going? Hi, Jim. How are things? Ross Varger is helping to find new areas of research. Yeah, well, this is the one. The cattle farmer has been working with geologists to contribute to the increasing knowledge of the Ediacaran period. He found the fossils on his property one day when he was mustering. It's been an amazing journey finding this fossil and then, you know, what has happened since, since then and seeing the uh, excavations and uh, uh, the importance of it. it, um, it it's been yeah, pretty mind-blowing and uh, it's good to be a part of it. 
While questions remain about what heritage listing would mean for those who live off the land, Ross Farger is a big supporter of the process. It needs to happen just for the protection of it and because it is known as one of the best sites in the world, we're certainly backing it all the way. Not only would World Heritage Listing help better protect these ancient treasures, but it could also prove highly beneficial for tourism at a time when job opportunities in the region are scarce. Ross and Jane Farger also own the local Parachilna pub, which relies on tourism to survive. With the nearby Lee Creek coal mine now closed, as well as Port Augusta Power Station, they believe geotourism is an industry with huge potential for jobs growth and World Heritage Listing would help. It just puts us on a, a, glo a global map and I think a lot of us just haven't realised that just in this, with this natural history here there's something that the world is incredibly interested in. This is their heritage, it's South Australia's heritage, it's Australia's heritage. We now want to confirm it as world heritage. Nicola Gage in the Flinders Ranges.